The whole world, the Buddha said, is to be found here in the body. And by world he means not only planet Earth, but the whole universe. The origin of the world, the cessation of the world, and the path to the cessation of the world all lie right here. There's a sutra where someone asked the Buddha how, how big the universe is. Is it does it have an end? Does it not have an end? It's one of those questions he put aside, but he did say, there's no way you can get to the end by walking or traveling. But you can get to the end by coming inside. We tend to think of the Buddha as being down on the body, and he does talk about all the negative aspects of the body. But he also talks about the positive aspects. We've got this body that we can use to practice, and we can learn how to understand how the mind causes itself suffering by examining the body, by staying with the breath, trying to be centered here in the body. Because it's right in here where things are going to become clear. When you're focused on the breath, you're right next to the mind. These are the intentions that are causing suffering, the whole process of becoming that starts with potentials and that we then actualize, are all going to be found right here. So try to make the most of this awareness. Of course, you will be dealing with the negative signs of the body as well. Number one, pain. There's aging, illness, and death. These things all come with part and parcel of being born and gaining this body to begin with. But the Buddha doesn't just have us reject the body. It's going to be leaving us someday, so we might as well just not pay it any attention. You've got to care for it. There's a great passage in a collection of John Lee's Dharma talks. It's not actually a Dharma talk, it was a conversation that was recorded there. This guy comes to John Lee and says, My friends have been harassing me. They know that I'm Buddhist, practicing Buddhist. And they say, Well, this body of yours is not self, so why don't you let us hit it? And the guy says, How should I respond to them? And John Lee says, Tell them you've borrowed it. You've got to take good care of it. Because when you return it to the owners, you want to return it in good shape. So we do have to take care of the body. Not obsess about it, but take care of it well enough so that we can still function. And we can use the body as our place for, for learning. This is what contentment means. We're born with bodies that have you know, their genetic problems and the inevitable aging, illness, and death. But you take care of them so you can use them properly. When I was staying with the John Fung, he was always very careful about the things we had at the monastery. Whether they were nice things or not nice things, we took care of them. He made it very clear. Of course, I've been raised in an, in an environment where it was easy to get new things when the old things wore out. But over there, there was no guarantee that if something wore out, it was going to be replaced. So you took good care of it, knowing that someday it would wear out. But you took good care of it nevertheless. Even simple things like the, the rags that we used to wipe our feet on. And John Fung told me about when he was with a John Munn. A John Munn would take the rags, and if you notice they'd gotten torn, he would sew them, patch them up. So even though this body is kind of like a rag, in the sense that it gets worn down very easily, you look after it to the point where you can't look after it anymore. And you try to get the most use out of it so that when you do have to let it go, or when it starts misbehaving, You don't get too upset. 
It's an interesting attitude. You care for it, but you have to not care about it. It's going to do its thing. Many times we feel that we have a special relationship with our bodies, that we take good care of it and it's going to take good care of us. And then we feel betrayed when it doesn't hold, its, hold up its end of the bargain. But you have to remember, it made no agreement at all. We were the ones who moved in, took it over, without asking permission. And so whatever it's going to do, it's going to do. So in the meantime, we have to get the most use out of it, caring for it when we can. And when we find that there are things that we cannot change, we have to let it go. But what does it mean to get the use out of the body? You develop the perfections, those qualities of mind. These are the things that actually make life worth living. They give meaning to life. We're born into this world with the desire to be born, but without any clear notion about why we want to be born and what we want to do with our, ourselves. That develops over time. And you look at the world as a whole, and the Buddha's view of the world has no purpose at all. There's no designer. There's no one setting a purpose for the world. As one of our chants says, there's no one in charge. And you think about that one way, it's a little scary. But if you think about it another way, it means that you are free to choose the purpose of your life. You don't have to subsume your desire for happiness under some larger purpose that somebody else has established for you. And in John Fung's words, nobody hired us to be born. We were the ones who wanted to be born. And now we have the choice to make the most of that. And the perfection, starting with generosity, and going down the list, generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, truth, determination, goodwill, and equanimity. Whatever we can do to develop these qualities, they give meaning to life, because they are the things that will be left when we have to leave the body. So this world we have inside, we put it to use for the purpose of the mind. If you think about that list and ask yourself, which qualities am I still lacking in? Because awakening requires all of them. If you were to ask which one is the most all-encompassing, you'd probably have to say determination. In other words, you're the one who makes up your mind where you want to go, how you want to go about it. And once you've made up your mind, you've got to stick with it. Otherwise, you develop something and then you drop it for a while. And then you develop some more and then you drop it for a while. But it never builds up momentum. You have to have the firm determination that this is what you want out of life. You want to find why the mind creates unnecessary suffering and you want to put it into it. That's a worthwhile goal, because as you understand that problem in the mind, you begin to understand and solve a lot of other problems as well. So we've got this body that we have to care for that will eventually leave us, and we don't know when it will leave or how much grief it's going to give us before it goes when it suddenly decides to do things that we never thought we'd give it permission to do, but it doesn't have to ask for permission. Again, as I said, we were the ones who moved in. There was no agreement. So it's up to us to make the most of the fact that this is what we have now, and we know we have right now. That's for a few moments down the line. We don't know about those. 
But we do know that we have this breath, this breath, this breath. So you make the most of them so that when the time does come to part, you'll be parting without regret, without a sense of missed opportunities. So we've got the opportunity now. Try not to miss it. I'm trying to maintain that attitude with each in and out breath. <laughs>